Uh, hello everybody, I'm Manel, a USM professor of Bioethics of Displacement and uh, it is a presentation about diversity and displacement action. Uh, so let's start. Diversity and displacement. What is the most massive displacement today? What would you say that is the most massive displacement? Syria, um, the most uh, massive displacement today is uh, not, not human. And the greatest displacement on Earth happens every night when the creatures from the sea dips go closer to the surface pushed by hunger and it has been happening for uh, more than a million years daily, timely and routinely. Natural devoid of politics as ad hoc and plenty of spirituality uh, has uh, done the work. It's like, uh, what makes the human displacement unique is the number of disciplines orbiting around this span, 20 years on average, and the professional animus against the displaced ones. Well, you can tell people on the Skype to the next slide. Yes, uh, the ne in the next slide, um, I, uh, the, the reason, do you see the... Well, because I see a mistake here. Um, if you like, uh, who is a migrant? If you see, if you like a life that differs from what is used to be, then you are quite a migrant. It's not the, the concept that we can see in, in movies um, and news and the the migrant uh, can be a migrant to a digital plane. It is not so determined by territoriality as we all see now. Bloody mindedness blinked us from seeing both diversity and migration as a natural phenomenon. Has the people you daily meet changed? In your town? Has changed the people? You meet when you were a child and now? Yes? Yes. <laughs> Indeed, uh, yes. The people in our towns likely have changed a lot. The old dominant racial admixture is being displaced. Uh, I have put uh, the, the pictures of uh, the national soccer team in, in French in only uh, one generation, there has been a great chance. It's time to say um, bye bye to the PL scheme. In 2010, more than 15 of the 25 million displaced persons worldwide came from African countries. Is changing the admixture in a way that the that the, with the whiteness and the blondies phenomena is uh, getting shinkred, uh, is uh, getting reduced. It's, uh, it's a, an ethnic background change. In 2044, the majority of all US citizens are, will be minorities in the same U.S. Census Bureau. And this just got underway. The, um, the white European, mainly Anglo-Saxon minorities, are, uh, being, are being reduced uh, uh, to a minority in their own countries. Uh, ten, slide number 10. Does it worry you? Are you worried, Darren? No. <laughs> no? Mm, mm, well, uh, many people is worried. Um, 
and too many ruthless pe of people are doing the worst of it. Uh, for example, traditional non-populist right, uh, last year Western populist parties, trending haters like the ones who committed the terrorist attacks of Toya, Quebec and Christchurch, and those who preach xenophobia on the internet, neoliberal policy makers, responsible for throwing their countries, minorities, to impoverishment, containment and quasi incarceration. Well, powering up the carceralness of national territoriality abroad. Even the ones who should be playing the wood are doing the worst of it. The liberal democracies uh, have been stuck in the solid walls of nationality and territory discourse for years. The political philosophers who have made a mess of the moral foundations of it as a no problem. I switch uh, to the to the cellular uh, have a pop out. Let's uh, rejoin by this. Yep. Um, less than 1% of users uh, across German, France, Spain, Italy, and Poland, many of them tied to the far right or French groups, uh, generated around 10% of content related to politics and the European election in the social media. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and others over a one month period ending on January the 20th. It is a, a massive over representation and of, um, of the person with a, a hard hat a message, um, mostly fixated with uh, immigration policies. Uh, get that into this because there is not a true philosophy of immigration but only a raw nationalist methodology of migration research. There is the Which slide are you on? To tell people. Seventeen. Uh, Seventeen is a uh, isn't that start by do you want more diversity? I know that you want more diversity. <laughs> uh, do you want more diversity? Next one. Next one. And uh, diversity in science. Diversity for every country, uh, regardless of daily group. And the countries uh, of low income are underrepresented in journals. Diversity of language. The the articles that which are not written in English and uh, have less chance to be published. Diversity in semantics, uh, how much time um, incarcerated in bipartisan uh, quantitative questionnaires in social research. Nineteen percent of Saharan migrants coming to Southern Europe from the Maghreb immigration hubs are victimized, including plenty of gun rape. That could be avoided through a sound public health system. If you look the the reference uh, are six years ago, but uh, less than twelve uh, hours ago. Uh, an immigration center has been burned in a place in Greece. Next. Uh, we should aim to more diversity and less abuse. Um, before, cases like the one of the Saharan women uh, who are systematically abused. And many feminists, rather than turning tables, 
lacks diversity itself, is too centered in a woman that doesn't exist, that is unhistorical and unethnic. Most socially developed countries also marry diversity to the far extent of this excellence. For example, in Australia, one in three school students are victims of racial discrimination. Zero. Zero ethical codes for cross-cultural psychotherapy in 2020. The study of migration and displacement unveils a narrative of moral supremacy. Next. Do you feel superior when you see people with different creeds, different moral beliefs, and that mostly are uh, in a um, underserved position? Do you feel superior of them? The number of people around you? and give you some sense of superiority or, or maybe uh, make you think that uh, oof, too many people is giving me, me the reason so there is something that doesn't work Next. Um, well many people those many people feel superior if there is more people around of them, if there is more people in their cultural manifestation, that will compare it to the people in the street uh, in front of them. It is um, a part, uh, um, it is uh, partially uh, a component of human nature, but uh, there is also a very important a sense of oppor social opportunism. The most sadistic behaviors against immigrants happen thanks to a structural injustice and an intended outcome from a widely accepted moral norm. Where those speeches on superiority lead? The prolonged encampment of refugees is not an explicit policy anywhere, but the states have the sovereign right of quasi incarcerating them to prevent terrorism and pandemics. In some cases, those, explicit, those implicit policies are plain abuse. There is uh, many examples, uh, some of them uh, have been well exposed by press in the case of Donald Trump. Cynically accusing immigrants is free. It's politically free and is uh, uh, economically free of being living chemical weapons, terrorists, unemployment beaters, whatever you need to gain relevance. Next. Brexit. Brexit is important for our, for our topic because it is the result of the conservatives insane enemies against immigrants. It is the core of Brexit. Peons with very difficult political views uh, like May and um, Fillmore and the uh, former US president show the common pattern of those who rely upon anti-immigration policies. That is the clear stroke that goes from mediocrity to xenophobia. Has uh, pop out uh, another time. I keep uh, with the server next and the pink one. A place for citizens and a this place for the non wealthy others. It is a plan. Money on ethics. Money on ethics, ethics of money. It is a false dichotomy? No. The main engine of displacement is a lack of economic diversity. 
Stop displacement takes the bunk market as usual. Who is to blame? Those who have become comfortable enough under the oil war and agriculture business, the AMF and unlike democratic organisms which at its displaced investment and with our local human networks and infrastructures leading to a silent and forced migration. Those behind the, the migration and displacement policies who are done like the high life while migrants bear the ground. You and me. We allow a great evil to be committed in our behalf. Bioethics must flow. Thank you for the presentation. I'm very sorry for the technical issues. And that uh, well, uh, who is to blame? The, the free software, me? Well, uh, thank you for your passion, anyways. Thank you. Thank you, Manuel. So, um, you. we'll start the discussion. Yep. And uh, I have a question. Uh, just briefly, um, do you think, what do you think about globalization? Is it a cause or a consequence of migration or displacement? The, the migration, uh, as we understand today, started thanks to the um, transoceanic navigation more than 150 years ago. Um, it was a, an effect of a more and more global economy uh, where the, the money can be done uh, from very distant ways in which and the people will stop producing for their uh, close for for the close acquaintance and proximities, and it uh, was a a major engine in the local economy. Of course, there is a important component of the uh, colonization, globalization. If uh, colonization wouldn't happen in this way, the two-day globalization would be very different mm -hmm. because there is a a good side of globalization in which a person from very distant parts of the world relate themselves by links of mutual necessity and trade and providing themselves with the goods they need. And it is a and it is a good way to relate with another person. But it is not uh, the the most uh, usual case, we, the fair trade is not the most usual way of trade, uh, it's, the, it's the exploitation. So the, um, the globalization and migration uh, goes uh, working, checking by the hands. Um, if I must to be more precise, um, uh, are you uh, calling me? Um, if, if I want to be more precise, uh, organizations. Turn it off. Turn it off. Uh, it's not you, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, if, uh, namely, organizations like the AMV um, should be main responsible in the uh, because they have acted against local economies that otherwise uh, would have reduced uh, the number of migrants and that in addition could be being reduced further even applying policies and like supporting the migrants in the country of origin that is a way to rever colonialism that has not been applied uh, and out due to the insanely high demands uh, that the foreign investors want that the uh, yet impoverished and underserved country uh, 
be committed with. And these demands are barely uh, exploitation with another name. Yeah, I have a question. So you uh, you mentioned there's the there's a rise in nationalism, right wing nationalism in, in Europe, Italy, Germany, and you had some data on the European majorities in countries they will become, I think, minorities in the next what 20, 30 years. Um, do you think that explains why there's a kind of rise in right wing nationalism and author authoritarianism across Europe and, and and the world? If so, is there anything that we can do to kind of combat that? I think that in the European context, the rise of populism, of far-right populism, um, is, uh, has been very conditioned because the, the left has stopped to represent the needs of the working class. And so they have a resort in a worse option. Um, you picture yourself a uh, a lot of people that is served, so to say, and by a by a political leader forming a clientele. If this a leader, for one way or for one reason or another, stop uh, serving them and displacing to other group of interest, this void is not void for a long time. Another political leader comes to to make their uh, life with the wishes of, represent, of being representing of these people. This, uh, that is what happened in Europe. Um, the uh, working class uh, were um, mirrored or were awaiting uh, for the traditional laborist party to make uh, something to improve the quality of life, but they have uh, uh, this place a more uh, globalist uh, position actually, so the more rancid <laughs> regionalist party that have been always there, but nobody pay attention to them, and driven by new technologies of communication, by an uh, ethic uh, information, uh, powered by the social media, have a stomp in this um, group of population, uh, absorbing all their political presence in order to impose a more and more radical views of what is a country uh, only like a territory, a borders, a borders that must to be protect, and that is uh, uh, heavily expressed in popular culture, like the movies heroes, the superheroes movies that are so trendy, the evil is always an alien, Thanatos or another person you can picture that come for your city to invade and to make your life a hell. So the local superheroes must to kick the game away. Welcome. Okay. Um, other comments or questions? Yes, so Sukran has some questions. Um. Yeah. Hi, Manel. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I like it. Uh, it is very nice. Uh, you mentioned that some uh, important points. Uh, I think that uh, we talk about the multiculturalism. Uh, it is important, we respect each other, etc. But, uh, but they don't want to uh, immigrant people. Therefore, do you think, people, are people sincere about multiculturalism views or it is only a kind of uh, uh, a kind of ah, uh, I uh, uh, to be nice, to be looks like a nice person. What do you think? Well, yes, there is a, a lot of uh, pose in any controversial, in any controversial topic related with uh, with politics. There are um, activists uh, most. Uh, 
hack cast series of people who are uh, handed in a hashtag um, putting uh, her complaints and uh, um, pointing the, the others like evil sometimes to uh, to bury the, uh, his or her own fouls. Uh, for example, in the in the case of uh, hashtag feminists in Spain, the many of the men who who were uh, most supportive to this uh, belief in the social media. I mean, never in the academic. It is another world. And were people who have been disclosed having relation with underage girls or the the first um, promoter of the Me Too movement, for example, uh, was ex exposed like having uh, similar behaviors to those she denounced. Um, in the case of multiculturalism. Is, uh, it would be very easy for a person to, um, to raise his flag in order to, to make the other pay attention to this and uh, maybe uh, hidden agendas around this topic. Um, it, is, uh, it could happen with, uh, with many other issues and is not a grant that a very conservative position uh, could uh, uh, suffer from the same faults uh, than an uh, active uh, multiculturalist uh, uh, support. It is, um, it is a sin that uh, uh, can be healed uh, the better in an open society. It is uh, also an important point when approaching to multiculturalism. Uh, close society uh, also close uh, its own hypocrisy about the, mm, this topic and many others. An open society has happened in the Me Too case in the US and is more resilient in the long run to a uh, perverted uh, multiculturalism or, uh, or paying lip service uh, to, this, uh, to this belief in pros of a uh, uh, way than a respected human species. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, the another question is uh, the what is the main issue uh, to trigger the migration according to you? The lack of economic diversity, I know that. Economic diversity, okay, yes. thank you. Does somebody else have any questions or comments? So, economic diversity is one trigger, but um, of course, what about intolerance? So we have religious minorities, we have, uh, which is one source, migration, uh, and a few other because of, uh, for example, sexual orientation, may have persecution in one country and may need to mi migrate. Also we have the immigrant novelty seeking uh, as well, you know. Um, so for example, we can ask, why are there so many Six uh, in Southall in England. Well, when they first came here, uh, people tend to um, uh, trust their own kind and uh, the issues of language, of culture, and things like that. Uh, there were a number of factories here which were um, offering jobs. The uh, Walls factory, the ice cream factory was uh, the famous one. Uh, uh, and quite a lot of them got jobs here. Um, <clears throat> whereas in many other uh, uh, factories, the uh, jobs were difficult because of racism. Uh, you know, the shop floor person uh, or the recruiter uh, 
uh, didn't want them and there were issues about uh, having a beard, etc. Uh, they created problems in some factories. So uh, as the first uh, batch of uh, Sikh immigrants came here, they set, uh, started taking jobs in Southall, they started uh, setting up shops here and then more and more and they came. There were quite a few factories here. Now the factories have closed down. Uh, the area has remained predominantly, well, it's not predominantly Sikh, but uh, there's a high number of Sikhs who set up their own Gurdwaras here. Uh, but there are many other communities uh, here now. Uh, there have been waves of immigrations have come and settled here. There are lots of Punjabi Hindus, uh, Pakistanis, uh, Somalis, uh, East Europeans, they've all sort of settled here uh, for some reason. Many find that this place is uh, very, uh, it's la it lacks any tensions. Uh, there is no, there's no sort of antagonism against them and they find it very comfortable. Uh, there haven't been any communal conflicts between the different communities here, uh, which is quite extraordinary and, uh, you know, it was also reported in the Cantal thing. But the other areas where a lot of Sikhs settled were the, uh, the Lancashire, um, area where there were hosiery factories and all that, they found jobs there. So even if they came with degrees from India, they couldn't really find good jobs, they had to work in factories. That's the reason. Yes, the, the point in common of the factor that Larry uh, has already mentioned uh, are uh, have in common the mind drive of the immigrant to, to migrate. It, that is uh, having a best social network around her. Uh, it can be a more exciting uh, social network, like in the novelty sector, migrant, a more tolerant social network, a more tolerant people around, like is the case of a religious or sexual minority. Mm -hmm. But um, the, our networks, our possibilities to uh, be selective in our network are in a, in, a mer in a world, plenty of market, very limited by the economy. For this reason, the, the lack of economic diversity is the main engine of, of, of a, a migration in distress of a person that is not a tourist, that is a forced migrant, or a person that has a bullet uh, of the life in this country that is a, a way of forced migration, the unhappiness with, the, with your uh, lifestyle. And so for this reason, it's important to um, think like the microcredits, as uh, the last Nobel Prize of Economy, uh, put, in, put in value and all the help that could be uh, realized in the country of origin that is uh, where the abuse most probably is committed. In, in addition to the abuse and root that we have seen that is very, very significant. Mm -hmm. On the, uh, the thing about um, the approach is to diversity, I think, which is uh, different between traditional Indian civilization and European civilization is that uh, uh, in European civilization uh, ethnicity is, been, is very territorially based. Okay, so you have the, the French, French nation, the Spanish, Spanish nation. In, uh, and, and therefore when there is a number of diversities come in, there is a, there is a perceived threat to the dominance of that ethnicity within that territory and maintaining their culture, etc. Uh, the, the way the Indian civilization traditionally, uh, not, we're not talking about the modern Indian state, we're talking about the pre-modern Indian civilization, was uh, that a number of diverse communities could coexist in the same territory but the boundaries were what were non-territorial, invisible. So a, Sikh, a, Sikh, a community of Sikhs will not try and co-marry within his, 
the community of Muslims and they will have uh, they, otherwise uh, the businesses and everything so they will not interfere in each other's cultures and civilizations so they could coexist in the same territory it was a de facto understanding of where different uh, the West understood that unfortunately as caste it was not necessarily caste it was how the sort of invisible boundaries of people where they had their own cultural practices which they then excluded others from but otherwise they would the commercial sectors and everything would be in the same place so they were not uh, competing for territory uh, and they could coexist in the same territory without being scared and that's uh, that is interestingly becoming uh, you know I think it's uh, it's interestingly becoming a model in uh, not model uh, but it's uh, I think unconsciously becoming so in 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 Britain, uh, I don't think anybody's articulated in those terms. Um, but what used to happen in let us say only about five or ten years ago was the concept was this uh, thing about white flight. So all the whites from South South Holland run away to areas like <laughs> Surrey, etc., uh, unable to keep the the Asians and the blacks out, so they've run away from here to Surrey, where property prices are high, or to Kent. Uh, but now they are beginning to learn to coexist in the same territory, where you don't interfe necessarily interfere in each other's cultures. Uh, which, uh, to the traditional liberal, uh, liberal, liberalist, uh, they can't come to terms with this sort of thing. New, a new way of coexisting different cultures, coexisting in the territory where you that you have diversity, but you have slight invisible boundaries and you're not fighting for territory. Uh, the liberals find that very uncomfortable. Uh, they haven't really got a theory to cope with it. I think it's an interesting sort of social science thing. Have you seen that the, um, the point uh, you have uh, expressed it in the case of the Southern Europe, uh, mainly in Spain, uh, is, a, is a territoriality that has been built upon a civilization coexisting. For example, um, it's difficult to find a, a land where the Muslim, the Jews, and the Christian have been cohabiting the same cities and so much time, like in uh, the Iberian Peninsula. The best uh, uh, poet uh, in the in the Spanish uh, uh, medieval in the Spanish Middle Age uh, was uh, openly homosexual, and the uh, Jews and Muslim uh, partying together uh, in in Al Andalus, and this was a normal way of life, and this was a uh, normal to trade. Even there is where. Uh, um, division in towns uh, like in the UK, the, the la plaza, the square, the, the agora coming from the Greek agora, uh, it was an institution in the Iberian Peninsula in the Middle Age. So the idea that there is today of Europe, like ter territorialness uh, minded. Uh, has constructed upon a situation like you have described and well described uh, on India. One of the remarkable things about the, the pre-modern India uh, is a picture on our website, uh, shrb.net, this one. Yeah. Uh, if you go to Mumbai, this is a predominantly Muslim area and there is a synagogue right in, in the middle of it. I don't think you'll find anywhere else in the world a synagogue in a Muslim dominated area. Okay? Uh, and there is no protection for the synagogue, there, nobody bothers them and they live their own life. And it's, uh, I think the experience of the Jews in India is very different than the experience of the Jews in Europe and elsewhere. Uh, the Jews in India have no concept of uh, persecution. Uh, they cannot relate to the stories and the paranoias that uh, keep Israel going 
uh, they find it very difficult to relate with them because nobody's ever persecuted them. They have lived in the middle of very different communities uh, without ever being uh, forced into marginalization, into ghettos or being asked to come get out. Whereas their experience in European history is not one that uh, you can write. So, you know, that in me, my opinion is uh, that we, modern India, try and, well, the, the erosion that is happening to Indian civilization with the, the current Indian state. Um, yeah. That's mm. it. Mm. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much for an interesting paper. Thank yes, you. Thank you, everybody.